Welcome to the Strategic Management Accounting course, where we teach the value-adding steps and processes necessary to execute strategy. Whether you are just starting up or looking to grow your business, then this course is for you. With your host, Dr. Neil O'Connor. Hi, welcome back. It's Neil, you got me. And week seven, what is important is that we are continuing our theme of getting the attention of senior management. And it's a C majors that focus on the financials. They don't always focus on the customer satisfaction, the surveys, or the machinery breakdowns, or the, whether employees are satisfied or not. They're focusing on the financials because it affects the bottom line that they are responsible for to the stakeholders. And that's what we've got here. We've got non-financial measures, but some financials that get us the attention of the CEO, the CFO, the CIO, because they are the big boys that make the big decision to allocate resources. So what we want to do this week is show how we can produce a quality control report in financial accounting language terms. And by showing it in financial accounting language terms, we can again, better report to the C managers to impress upon them the importance of undertaking a particular quality control initiative or the importance of closing down a factory or the importance of fill in the blank okay remember you have gotta get their attention to possibly get resources for an initiative or to get support to change the direction of a particular initiative. So let's get into the good stuff with respect to a particular example for this week. And here we have, we've got Osborne, yes, exercise 1916. This is from the Horn Grun et al. Cost accounting textbook, the famous one, we're up to the 15th edition now. It's been around for ages. Yes, you got it. So Osborne produces cell phone equipment Amanda Westerly, the Osborne's president, decided to devote more resources to the improvement of product quality after learning that her company had been ranked fourth in product quality in the 2011 survey of cell phone users. Osborne's quality improvement program has now been in operation for two years and the cost report shown here has recently been issued. So here we have here is three questions that you are required to fill out in terms of answering this exercise. For each period, you would calculate the ratio of each cost of quality category to revenues and total quality costs. Based on the results in requirement one, would you conclude that Osborne's quality program has been successful? Prepare a short report to present your case. Based on the 2011 survey, Amanda Wesley believed that Osborne had to improve product quality in making her case to Osborne management. How might Wesley have estimated the opportunity cost of not implementing the quality improvement program? Now the opportunity costs, we understand that is the cost of an opportunity foregone. And so what we mean here an opportunity cost is you do not go down the path of some quality initiative. So you may lose in one of three ways. Number one, people may not buy your product because it's poor quality. Number two, people may not pay as high a price because it's poor quality. Number three, you lose the opportunity to produce more units. So then there's lost production and cost of capacity that is just not utilized. So keep those three things in mind. The first is top line that you lose. Second is a margin that you lose. And third is the utilization of your capacity. That's an opportunity cost. These are all three opportunity cost areas. So let's get into the calculation, shall we? Here we have the ratios of each cost of quality category for 
2012 and 2013. Let me draw your attention to three areas of cost of quality statement that is prevention costs, appraisal costs, internal failure costs and external failure costs. I think these are four areas here and basically what these areas represent are different stages of a cause and effect chain. So for example, we're beginning at prevention in the factory and at the end of the production period, we are starting to incur appraisal costs. Then at the same time, we may incur internal failure costs. And if we don't incur them and the faulty products go out to the customer, guess what? We're going to get external failure costs. And you know you don't want external failure costs. This is a big no-no. That's going to affect the brand image, the reputation, and it's going to affect a lot of things going forward. So we want to put our big dollars traditionally at the prevention stage with the whole idea that we can save costs at the external failure state and the internal failure state. So if we invest more here at the prevention stage, hopefully we can minimize the costs down here at the external failure stage. That is the whole idea of a cost of quality report. So let's have a look at some of the trends in this report. First of all, the total quality of costs are 24.7%. That's as a percentage of revenues in 2012. By 2013, the total costs devoted to quality control in these four areas amounted to just 14%. So suddenly the trend, we have 27% going down to 14%. We have a over 10 percentage basis points reduction in the share of total revenue of expenses that are associated with total quality control in the organization. Now that's a good thing. Next, we have external failure costs and they were 4.3% in 2012, 3.5% at the end of 2012. Then we go into 2013, they have been reduced down to 2%. We can see the same trend with external failure costs, moving from 8.9% in 2012, all the way down to, you got it, 2.8%. So originally, things weren't really good in 2012 and things have improved a lot in 2013. What is important here are these improvements are in, we are assuming they're in the right direction. So let's just double check with this report that they are in the right direction. What happened with appraisal costs? They were 5.3% in 2012 and they were 3% in 2013, they're obviously gone down too. What about prevention costs? They were 6.2% in 2012, and they are now 6.3% in 2013. So we can see the trend here. The prevention costs, there, was be, there has been a huge shift to improve the prevention costs. So we actually invested a lot from 510,000 to 754,000 in prevention, maybe more machine maintenance, more supplier training, more design reviews. So we're getting into problems before they have to begin in the factory process. We want to get the right suppliers. We want to get the right machines. We want to maintain the machines. So we're, we're, tr we're trying to get to the problem before they occur. And because we have invested more early stages of 2012, continuing into 2013 with 7%, it means that maybe we don't need to invest as much 
going further into the future because we put a bulk of our money, the 754, the 650 in these two periods so we can back off in the fourth period, 2013. What has happened? As a result, the appraisal costs have gone from 5.3% down to 3%. There's not as much inspection needed because you're not picking up as many problems on the production line. There's not as many much final testing needed because everything is coming out clean and accordance with standard. What about the internal failure cost gone from 4.3% to 2%? Again, less rework, there's less scrap. And as a result, what is sent out, there's less warranty repairs and less customer returns. Those costs going from 8.9% down to 2.8%. So you can see the trends. But what was important is our theory. The whole idea of a cost of quality report is to show the trend in expenditure between the four different types of quality. And keeping in mind the cause and effect relationship, we want to invest more in the earlier stages of the whole value chain of quality control. So therefore we can reap the benefits of not having to incur that much in the later stages where internal failure occurs and where external failure occurs. So let's go to the next stage, shall we? Big question, and I've answered some of these already. Has Osborne's quality program been successful? So in summary, yes, it has. The total quality costs have gone from 24.7% down to 14%. In external failure costs have gone from 8.9% of total revenues down to 2.8% of total revenues. Internal failure costs have gone from 4.3% down to 2%. And appraisal costs have gone from 5.3% down to 3%. So you can see that the quality program has been successful. There's been a huge saving. More than 10% of total revenue has been saved from the new quality control program. And that is even including the costs invested in the new initiatives in the program. Yes, so let's go to the next stage and that is the opportunity cost. Remember what I said at the outset, opportunity costs are three types. Number one, top line revenue. Number two, margins. Margins associated with that revenue. So top line revenue in terms of the number of units that are being sold multiplied by the price. So it can affect the number of units being sold. Number two, it can affect the price that you can charge, the opportunity cost, because customers may not pay so much if they think your quality product goes into a lower level, a lower price bracket. Yes, we know that. And number three is the lost production opportunity. That is, you don't get to use all your capacity because customers are not demanding as much as per prior periods. So these are all potential areas of opportunity cost. And the question is, has Osborne's quality program been successful? Yes, we have the quality costs, improved designs, and production does enough not have to spend as much time with the customer service as they are now making the product right the first time. So this is part of the report that you would make as a result of the numbers or the trends that you have no noted be across those four different categories of total quality cost report. How might you estimate the opportunity cost of not implementing the quality improvement program? Now I mentioned earlier there are three types of opportunity costs. Number one is the number of units that you may not sell that you could have sold if you have a better quality product. So number two is the price you could have sold it for if you had a better quality product. And number three is the lost production opportunity that is you've got excess capacity there because customers are not buying as much as what they would have had you had a more consistent product in terms of defects, 
failures warranty returns yes and we don't want that happening do we so in these three areas we use that as our guidance for working out the potential opportunity costs of not implementing a quality improvement program let's have a look at it number one we have sales and market share will continue to decline if the quality program is not implemented and then calculate the loss in revenue and contribution margin so really it's the price time the unit sales mm. the customer would have to compete on price rather than quality because customers see that lower quality and they say look that belongs in a lower price bracket and finally we have opportunity costs associated with potential loss production so let's just have a look at this final note that the opportunity costs are not recorded in accounting systems because they are the results of what might have happened if the company had not improved quality and this is what you need to be excited about you need to have the excitement and the belief that an initiative you're fighting for can overcome these opportunity costs of not implementing a particular initiative. Yes, and you back that up with a total cost of quality report or a potential co total cost of quality report under the new initiative. And so this report gives you structure because it's got numbers. And then with that numbers, you have briefing or brief points behind the numbers. And you're able to get the manager's attention with those numbers. And then they become your new KPI if the initiative is adopted. And that's how it goes with getting the attention of senior management. And that's why a total cost of quality report is very important. Just... A final note, opportunity costs of poor quality can be significant. It is important for Osborne to take these costs into account when making decisions about quality. So take it into account, use it in your argument when you want to fight for a particular total quality control initiative that you want to implement. So there we have the first exercise in total quality control or the total cost of quality reporting. Thank you and I'll catch you in the classroom. Bye for now.